only two people that have fold up maps in their glove compartment. I guarantee you, Bob Bush got it. Oh, Sandy Hope, okay. Well, all right, all right. Well, it's, it ain't very many folks that have fold up maps. Most of us take out our phone or we have we have a separate GPS that, 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 that is so connected to the satellite. We, you know, we, we've been to the Cleveland Clinic nine and uh, about 15 times. Every time we start off, we hit that button to go to the Cleveland Clinic. We say it's because it gives us real-time traffic reports, but we don't want to get lost. Well, the problem is we have all these things to help us save time. Why is it that we should have so little time for the things that really matter? Just you know, a laughable thing in the 1960s. They said in 50 years, the work week would be shortened to at least four days. People would be retiring early because they didn't have enough to do. Well, the only, the only reason I can see people are working four days is because they've been cut back because of, of, of yeah, budget issues. The truth of the matter is, we have to remember that saving time is not making time. The story about uh, two men who, who decided to have a wood chopping contest. And the first guy was at the, they started at the same time. The first guy chop, 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 and he took a little 10 minute lunch break, chop, 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 all day long. But every time he looked over, the other guy was sitting down. Sitting down resting, he couldn't understand it. And, and so at the end of the day, the guy that was sitting down had a big pile of wood. And he said, Well, how could that be? How could you have? I work all day long except 10 minutes at lunch. And you've got a bigger pile of wood. I said, well, you don't understand. You see, every time I sat down to rest, I sharpened my hands. Saving time is not making time. You've got to remember that. You've got to remember that. So the third point is to let God give us time. Let God give us time. Because there's a real difference in our minds in managing time in a task-oriented fashion, and stopping thinking about time as a precious gift from God. Time as a precious gift from God. And even in those, even in those interruption times, even in those interruption times, but, uh, I've had some excellent secretaries. I've, I've, I've had four in my tenure here, uh, and, and, and they've all been good. But I got to pick on one. I got to pick on Leah. Leah was my secretary kind of in the middle. Ten years. She worked 20 hours a week, and she knew what she was going to do on Friday, Monday morning. And anytime anything got in the way, she got all bamboozled and didn't know how she was going to get caught up. About three years in, we sat down, and I talked to her, and I said, look, Leah, the ministry is in the interruption.
so uh, we're real clear that my daddy is present. So <laughs> step back at things to remember. To remember, first of all, we need to take time to be present with those around us, not hurting by those people who will be a blessing to us. To make time instead of saving time in our world of, of work and play and rest. And finally, to claim the blessings God has given us in God's time. Now I want to end this with, with the, the little gift of a poem that you should have all gotten on, on the uh, what? Slow down from the pressure of our life and take time for God's time.